You've heard of Clubhouse, right? The audio-only app took off during the pandemic. At the peak of the hype, back in February 2021, when Elon Musk had joined the app, the invites were selling for hundreds of dollars a pop. And there was actually another app called Clubhouse, which was forced to change its entire name because their Android app was getting so many negative reviews from people who were looking for the Clubhouse audio Android app, which didn't exist yet. However, fast forward a few months and Clubhouse lost its hype as quickly as it found it. And there's a lot to unpack on why, but there's a couple of reasons that come to mind. One is trashy content recommendations. Second is other companies like Twitter and Spotify building similar functionality in their products. And third, it could just be that the COVID restrictions have died down and no one really wants to use an audio only app when they could meet up in real life. In this video, instead of focusing on the product, I actually wanna spend more time talking about what are the likely outcomes for Clubhouse the company. I wanna walk through five different outcomes that might happen, including shutting down Clubhouse, getting acquired, or raising new funding. I don't have any inside information about the internal workings of Clubhouse, but I did uh, a bunch of research and I talked to friends who work in venture capital or corp dev. So hopefully this can give you some insight about what might happen to a high growth startup, which has lost its allure. First, some background on the funding situation for Clubhouse. The app blew up in early 2021 and it raised $100 million at a $1 billion valuation. And at this point, they only had an iOS app and that was invite only at that point too. Three months later, they raised more money on an undisclosed amount at a $4 billion valuation. And at this point, they still didn't even have an Android app. One thing I wanna call out, which I don't think a lot of people know, and it does actually have an impact on the likely outcome for the company, is that when you have a hot startup like Clubhouse raising a bunch of money, it's pretty common for the founders to get some liquidity early. And what that means is the founders will typically sell some percent of their shares to the VCs when they're raising money at the $1 billion or $4 billion valuation. And the reason is because the VCs want to incentivize the founders to be much more long-term focused. And so if I can get 3 or $4 million worth of liquidity and buy a house and you know take care of my expenses, I'll be much less likely to accept an offer at a lower valuation because the founders and the VCs want to be on the same page of building a $10, $50 billion company in the long term. And so this probably happened with the founders of Clubhouse, Paul and Rohan. And it also happened with other companies like Snapchat, where Evan Spiegel and Bobby Murphy took some money off the table in earlier funding rounds before the company actually went public. With all that context out of the way, here's my prediction for what will happen to Clubhouse within the next year, year and a half, starting with the least likely option. First, an obvious outcome is that Clubhouse could shut down. The founders could decide that they don't want to work on the business anymore and then lay off the team and then whatever remaining money they have, that'll go back to the investors. This is really unlikely to happen because Clubhouse raised a bunch of money very early on. And so I'm sure they still have tens of millions of dollars, maybe hundreds of millions in the bank. So they still have a lot of operational capital and they can pay their people and attract other smart people to come join them. They still can build their, build their product. The other reason why I think it's unlikely is because when you take on that much money from VCs, you're basically giving them your word that you're 100% committed to the business for at least a five to eight year time horizon. And so it would look bad or look inappropriate for you to prematurely end the business and return capital to investors because you're not actually upholding your end of the bargain as the founder. Another very unlikely outcome for Clubhouse is to go public. In order to go public, you have to have some evidence that you can actually turn your app, your user base into a business and monetize them effectively. And there's not really any evidence of that at Clubhouse yet. And the other issue is that Clubhouse is now facing an uphill brand battle. And once you lose that cool factor for consumer social, it's very hard to build that back. If Clubhouse really wants to go public, either through an IPO or a SPAC, um, they would have to drum up interest from public investors. And I just don't see the fundamentals of the business being there that the public market would want to invest. And so the stock would just get hammered. And also from the VC perspective, they have certain rights and there's some governance that they can actually block a company's ability to get liquidity or go public because almost certainly the valuation of the company would be lower than $4 billion, which is the last private round. In the territory of what might happen with higher probability, Clubhouse could get acquired in the next year. And there are a couple of different types of acquisitions that might happen, but the best outcome would be a product acquisition. And what that means is that a company like Spotify or Facebook thinks that the Clubhouse app and the user base is really valuable and strategically also valuable for their own roadmap. And they would acquire the whole company with the whole team. There are two reasons why I think this kind of acquisition is unlikely. Number one, at this point, I think most competitors to Clubhouse have already built or integrated some version of live audio into their product. 
And second, when you acquire a company which is still fairly small and unproven, doesn't really have meaningful revenue, then you're usually acquiring it for expected future growth. And that narrative for Clubhouse just isn't there anymore. And so the valuation or the amount that they could get acquired by, it, I don't think it can justify $4 billion right now. The more likely form of an acquisition would be a talent or tech acquisition behind the folks at Clubhouse. And this is basically admitting defeat that Clubhouse would never become a multi-billion dollar company, but we're trying to salvage a decent outcome here for the people involved. For the acquiring company, Clubhouse could be a really interesting target for two reasons. Number one, live audio is a technically sophisticated product. And so the acquiring company might want the patents or the expertise that Clubhouse has developed over the past two years. And second, um, typically in this kind of situation, the engineering and product team, the builders of the company are really valuable to the acquiring company. That experience and that knowledge is extremely valuable. And so um, they are really interested in, in those top talent people at Clubhouse. Unfortunately, in this situation, usually the sales and marketing people are not valued as highly and they might be let go in the case of a talent acquisition or aqua hire. In this outcome, there are three different parties involved, all with different incentives. First, you have the acquiring company and they're really only interested in the operational team behind Clubhouse. So they want all the money to actually go toward, toward them and not the VCs. Second, you have the VCs and they actually have a lot of power here because they could potentially block the transaction. And you know, ideally what they want is a home run exit where they get a huge multiple on their investment and they may not want this lower outcome. And then finally, you have the executive team for Clubhouse. They'll have the responsibility of advocating for the Clubhouse employees. Usually if it's a talent acquisition, the employees at Clubhouse will get a nice compensation package at the new company. Finally, what I think is the most likely outcome for Clubhouse within the next year or two is for them to raise new capital at a lower valuation than what they last raised at, which is called a down round. When a VC invests in a startup, they typically put in enough money to give 12 to 18 months of runway, basically enough to de-risk the next milestone for the business. And so given that Clubhouse last raised a year ago, within the next two years, I do think they're gonna to get to a point where they'll need more capital to operate. The issue is that if Clubhouse did want to raise more money later this year, they've lost all their leverage because they clearly haven't lived up to the hype of the $4 billion valuation a year ago. So at that point, the negotiation will be between the executive team at Clubhouse and the venture capital along three dimensions. Number one is money. How much money does Clubhouse actually need to get to the next milestone? Number two is ownership. How much dilution is Clubhouse willing to take on in order to bring this new venture capital and this new money in? And third is governance. How many board seats will the venture capital take? And how, how many rights does the VC have compared to previous investors? The reason I think a down round is the most likely option for Clubhouse within the next year and a half or two years is because in this domain, consumer social, there really is a binary outcome. Either Clubhouse will die or it'll become a multi-billion dollar company with tens or of millions or hundreds of millions of people using the product every week or every month. And so I can very easily imagine a investor who wants to take that bet on Clubhouse, given that they're now getting a very steep discount in ownership of the company relative to previous investors. Hopefully that was helpful as a way to understand what might happen to a hyper growth company, which no longer has that much hype. Let me know what you think in the comments is the most likely outcome, or if you have a different perspective on the analysis. I'd love to hear from you and it'll be interesting to see in the next year what actually happens with Clubhouse. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.